your brothers and sisters in Christ are a perfect opportunity to practice love. Oh, so true. Oh my gosh. You know what? Can I just say something about that? I think I've been realizing, I'm like, it's actually really easy for me to, it, I feel like it's easier for me to love people who don't know the Lord. Yes. But it is yes. even harder yes. to love somebody who is in the faith. I don't know why, it's, but I think it's just the dynamic of like family and strangers. There's yeah. something about like, it's so much harder to love your family. And when we all like are part of the family of God and, you know, we've chosen to like, live our life, surrender to Lord Jesus, we are literally family. And I've, I think that's, that's why I shared the whole, like, he's near to the broken. He's near to the needy. He's near the jacked up because he's been teaching me how to love people. And it's not, it's not the person on the street or it's not the person, you know, in the lane next to me who flips me off. Cause I'm like, I could care less, but it really is the person who loves God as well. And who hurts me or who just annoys me. I feel like it's so much harder. Sorry. I just had to. Oh my. No, it is so much harder because you expect more from them. You expect yeah. more. You know, you just expect more from them. And so it is harder. And I just love that scripture. Christina, can I have the site? He's near to the jacked up. Oh, he's near to the, okay. That's the Christina version. I have to look it up though. I know, no, I know that. I love it. I'm like, I love it. It's in the book of Christina, uh, oh, 10, verse 11. He is near to the jacked up. I know because he's near to me. So right. I'm going to try to practice empathy. The Lord is near the jacked up. Oh gosh, Anna put it on the screen. <laughs> I know. But, in a, but you know, it's so perfect because honestly, like, A, I love, I love this form of, of teaching and I love Girl Club because it's, scripture is real and it's alive and it's relevant. And I love, you know, sometimes you guys will make the deepest scriptural uh, uh, truth or teaching. Um, you'll put it in people speak, right? You know, and 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 I'm, t I'm sorry, when I'm brokenhearted, I'm jacked up. You know, when I'm feeling sad and lonely and overlooked and unwanted and abandoned, I'm jacked up. And when I'm feeling rejected, you know, I really am jacked up. I act jacked up. I, you know, everything starts to feel jacked up and my experience is jacked up and it's messed up, you know, and it's like, that's what we've been really talking about, you know, just this whole mocking spirits and spirits of rejection and words, you know, uh, it, uh, you know, it, 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 it'll taunt you by using your failures against you, you know, and actually, I really believe that a spirit of rejection will constantly bring you perceived failure so that yeah. you can just eventually one day give up. And I think that's how the enemy uses it, you know, but we're going to dive in today. And the first thing I am going to say to you is don't give up. You know, if you have a spirit of rejection at work in your life, if you're struggling with words that have been put on you by other people or even by yourself, words that now sound like your own voice playing themselves over and over again in your mind, you know, it'll never happen for you. You may hear words like that. You may hear words like you're too fat, you're too black, you're too blonde, you're not this enough, you're not that enough, you're privileged, it's not your time anymore. It's all this stuff, you know, you can't because, you won't because of this, you know. All of that stuff is like the enemy's playbook, you know, to get you to feel rejected and to get you to give up on yourself you know, and to give up on others and to give up on life in general, but don't do it. You know, don't let this spirit be at work running your life. Recognize when it's at work in your life and then learn to take spiritual authority over it because everybody experiences rejection. We've all felt the sort of mockery of that enemy that taunts us in our mind that says, you know, you're anything but a daughter of a king. You're anything but able to overcome. So at some time or another, we all have to deal with that. And we've been talking about the things that indicate, you know, that you might have a demonically empowered spirit of rejection at work in your life. And last week, Christina and I started with the first five. I'm going to run them off to you really quickly. Um, and then we're going to pick up the last five. So the first one was you find yourself comparing your circumstances or situations with others and you never seem to measure up. The second one, you feel like you missed out on life's opportunities and now it's just too late. 
you know that one, right? I'm too old. It's too late. It didn't happen. It hasn't happened for me all this time. So it's not going to happen now. Number three, no amount of encouragement is enough to convince you of your worth. And you know this one. All your friends tell you, girl, you're fabulous. They all tell you how smart you are. It doesn't matter. Nobody can actually convince you of your self-worth. Like you just don't seem to hear what we're all telling you. I'm telling a lot of you right now, you're amazing. You're fierce. You're fabulous. You were created with a purpose and you're still struggling with believing what I'm saying to you. And I'm not saying it from myself. I'm saying it from what the Holy Spirit is laying on me right now to say to any of you watching, you are amazing. Don't let this spirit mess you up. Uh, the fourth one we talked about was that, and this is a good one. You feel rejected if you're not greeted or acknowledged by leadership or by those in authority. And you know that one, you know, uh, the one that makes you shrink or makes you get about this small. You pull your voice back. You pull your presence back because you don't feel like you're being acknowledged or recognized by leadership. Well, girlfriend, you know who you are in Christ. If you're struggling with that, then you got to go. You just got to go as with all of these to the word of God because you know who you are. Build it up. Build up your identity in Christ and you won't seek acknowledgement from others outside of yourself. The fifth one we dealt with last week was um, if you feel like you constantly seek the approval of others or suffer from people pleasing. People pleasers are usually dealing with the spirit of rejection because they feel like if they don't please, if they don't seek the approval of other people, then they're going to get rejected. They're not going to get invited back. They're going to be talked about in a certain way or thought of badly. It's not true. Set your boundaries and don't worry about other people because if those other people really love you and, and they care, they may struggle with the boundary you need to set, but they'll adjust and they'll deal because they love you and you're worth it. And when you show up, it's awesome. So if you're suffering with people pleasing, man, you got to remember, you know, the Bible says, don't be a respecter of persons. We're all the same. Don't put anybody on a pedestal above yourself. Be respectful, be honest, be kind. But while you do that to others, do it also for yourself and then find the balance, right?